Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday. It is August 14th. The year is 2023, and this is a special YouTube premiere, which means I'm here right now with you in the live chat. I am going to teach you today how to make a double flap of fun fold card that has a Christmas theme. But the great news is if you're not ready to make your Christmas cards yet, I've got several other samples to share with you that you can create this fun fold all year round. Now, one thing I want to make sure I point out to you is about the project sheet. That's going to be linked for you down in the video description below when tonight's premiere is over. And you're going to want to grab it. It's going to include pictures, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for all the cards I'm going to share with you this evening. Next, we would love to chat with you, whether you're watching the replay or you are here with us in the live chat. But in order to do so, YouTube requires that you log into your account using your Gmail address. So go ahead and do that now. And I want to take a second just to introduce you to Gina Hawley. You'll see her name off in blue with mine to the side. We are both here to interact with you and answer your questions and provide links for you. All right, we're ready to get started. This double flap fun fold card is comprised of two pieces. I'm going to be using Mossy Meadow for my card this evening. This is measuring five and a half by 10. As a reminder, all those cutting dimensions and supplies are listed for you in that free project sheet. We're going to do two simple score lines one and one half inch, which is here. Now there's a lovely ledge here at the top of my trimmer as well as the bottom. I can't do anything without it because I don't do anything straight. So I make sure my cardstock is lined up there. This trimmer includes both a scoring blade and a cutting blade. So the scoring blade is the light one and the dark one is the cutting blade. So since we're just gonna be scoring, I'm gonna navigate the other one down and we're gonna line that up at one and a half inches and we're gonna score. I'm going to scoot all the way over to five and three quarters of an inch, and then we are going to score again. Now there is a second portion, and this is three and a half by seven, and we're just going to score it in half at three and a half inches. Now I'm going to tell you right now, there's lots of variations for this card, so get creative when you put yours together. I'm going to put the small top card to the side, and let's work on the base. And I'm going to grab my bone folder for this, because we're going to go over these score lines. I'm going to turn it just to make it easier for my hand. And this is a good time to check to make sure that your top and bottoms are nice and even. None of us scores perfectly. And then I'm going to come over here and that flap is going to come to the front. And then we're going to score again. So if you have that little bit of bulk right there, that's exactly what I did. You're going to want to make sure that you work that out. You want to make sure your card's going to fold nice. And again, that comes because none of us scores perfectly. Let's start by decorating this. And you're going to notice that there's a flap here. And I thought it called for decorating. This portion, I decided to use designer series paper. And let me show you what I'm using tonight. This designer series paper, believe it or not, is coming from Let's Go Fishing. So Stampin' Up! designer series papers are double-sided, which means you have lots of options. One side is themed, as you can see. The other side is generic, which means you can mix and match it all year round with all types of cards. And I love that because it expounds on your purchase. Now I'm going to turn this sideways to make it easier for my hand. And that's very vanilla. And I just picked up that color from the designer series paper. And I'm going to give that a nice border all the way around. Let's go ahead and let's add some more adhesive to the back. This mat underneath me is called the silicone craft sheet. And it's going to keep my work surface clean. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means if I get a little bit of excitement going with my adhesive or my glue, I don't have to worry about it sticking to my work surface. And we're now opened up the flap, and I'm just centering this the best that I can here on that inside layer, and then we're just going to press that in place. Now let's talk about this. Of course you can leave it plain, but I want to teach you something fun tonight we're going to do a little bit of stenciling. Now I've pulled out this stencil from the Artistic Mix Decorative Masks. Stampin' Up! calls them masks, they are stencils. This is a great four pack, I'm sorry, this is a great five pack. I forgot about the one in the back. So there's labels and all kinds of different patterns. And the great thing about these plaids is believe it or not, these can go over the top of each other and you can create multiple layers. But we're going to use this one for tonight. And I don't know about you, but whenever I stencil, this can kind of slip and slide. So let me show you what I do. I'm going to bring in my artboard. Now you're going to be able to find this linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. This is not a Stampin' Up! product, but so many of you have asked about it that I've linked it there for you so that you can find it. Absolutely love this. It wipes off with just a paper towel or a baby wipe, and it's double-sided, and it's nice and thin, easy to store. 
Now I'm going to want to hold my cardstock down and I'm using a small piece of wild wheat cardstock. It's a very interesting color, isn't it? It's got a hue of both of yellows and greens, but you know, this is going to chase itself all over the board. So I took a small piece of low tack tape and I'm going to put that on the back side. Now let me show you where I got this from. This is the delicate surface frog tape. And I find that the other tapes, the blue one especially, will rip my paper. This is also linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites, the same place I have the board because I thought for sure you'd like it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that on top of here. Now, of course, we've got the stencil. Now, if you don't want to have to hold it, this is where the tape comes into play. I keep some pieces that I've previously used inside the lid. And I'm just going to align this how I want it for my stencil. I'm just kind of looking to try to make it even. And I'm going to tack down one end here. I'm going to take another piece and we're going to tack that down here. And if you need to, you can add more. I think you get the idea. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take a clear block. Now I'm going to use a blending brush, but a lot of people like to put the blending brush right inside their ink pad. But I find that several things happen. It picks up way too much ink. In addition to that, it kind of sucks dry a little spot on my ink pad. And it could be because I'm just heavy handed. But if you want to try this at home, I think you're going to really enjoy it. When these ink pads are highly pigmented like this one, you don't need a whole lot. So you're just going to kind of tap lightly on top of there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this because we're not going to need that again for right now. But I do want to bring in a piece of scratch paper. I have my small grid papers here and I'm going to do a little bit of rubbing off. Now I have a blending brush that's dedicated to this wild wheat color. But again, you can see how dark that is. Even when I load it on my brush, I want to make sure that it's not too dark. So I always like to rub some of it off here because I want to be able to control the coverage. I'm going to place my hand off here to the side and I'm just going to work in small circular motions all the way down the cardstock. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, you can't see what you're doing. That's very, very true. So I'm going to give you another tip. I like to work at the top and work my way across and then come back from the other direction. I'm looking for a very faint pattern. What you'll want to do is you'll want to carefully lift the stencil from one end and just give that a little bit of a peek. Now, I know you cannot see it, so I'm going to hold it up for you. I think it's a color of the paper on top of the board, but it's really faint and it's really, really pretty. Turn this to release the paper. Don't pull. And I'm hoping that gets picked up on camera. There you go. It's just subtle enough that it has some texture. And of course, you can always use an embossing folder. This now you're going to rub right off on your scratch paper to get rid of any excess ink. And then you're just going to clean this right on your stamp and scrub or your chamois, just like you would have stamped. These pieces are going to go right back here in the lid so that I can use them again and again. And then I keep this one right on the top. Now you're probably wondering how I clean the stencil. I just run it underneath the tap water and I let it air dry. Now, if you're in a hurry sometimes like I am and you want to use it again immediately, Pet it dry between some paper towels or some lint-free rags, and then you're good to go to use it again. Now for this, I decided I wanted an equal layer to the one we did for the designer series paper. So I'm going to flip that upside down and we're going to add some adhesive here to the back side. Now, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm so glad that you're here. I hope that you'll click that subscribe button and then the word all. By doing so, YouTube will send you notifications when I'm here on YouTube with new content. I would absolutely love to inspire you. This now is going to go here on the flap of the card. And then we're going to work on the rest of this. We're going to add some more adhesive to the back side. Also, if you're new, head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com. And there, I'm just going to open this up to make it easy. And there you're going to be able to find under my shop, a whole list of PDF tutorials in my library. Lots of ideas there for you. Looking to leave that narrow margin. So I'm looking all the way around and we'll press that in place. Let's now work on what's going to be the top or what we're calling the double flap for this card. Remember this little piece? I want to push that one off to the side and this one's going to do all the work. Let's go ahead and let's fold this up. Once again, I want you to look at those edges. Go over them again with your bone folder to make sure that they're nice and straight. Now here's where I'm going to do some stamping. So I've got a layer going here and let me show you what we're going to be using tonight. We're using a brand new bundle called Trucking Along. Now it's the stamp set with the coordinating Trucking Along Builder Punch. So this is like four punches in one. So it's going to do lots and lots of fun things. You can make obviously silhouettes of pickup trucks 
with hubcaps and a window and tires, lots and lots of fun, or you can use it with the stamp set. And we're gonna do both tonight. Let's go ahead and let's do some image work here. The one thing I love about the stamp set is not only does it have these adorable little outlines that obviously you can color, it's also a two-step stamp, which means you're able to fill it in without coloring it if you don't want to. Let me bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see. I think instead of starting here, I am actually going to start with the bottom piece. There's a little scratch piece here that I'm calling a scratch piece. I'm just gonna ink that up and that's to be reminiscent of the road. Now you want that a little bit less than half and I'm trying really hard to keep my head out of your camera view. And we're gonna stamp that there. Now above this is where I am going to stamp the truck. And because that's just regular water-based ink, I re-inked it because I wanna make sure that it doesn't dry before I'm ready to use it. Cleaning that off camera. And now what we're gonna do is start filling this in. There's an image inside the stamp set that looks like this. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? But guess what? It fills the tires. So we're gonna ink that up as well. And then what you're looking is for those two dots for the center of the hubcaps to line up. Now with photopolymer, it's easy, but you're gonna see my head because at my age, I have to get closer. There we go. And we're gonna lift. Now we're gonna work on the truck part. So let me move this off to the side for a minute. And I'm gonna use cherry cobbler. I decided I needed a pop of color with that pretty plaid. And here is the fill image. Now you're looking at this thinking, why is it pink? Great question. Photopolymer are clear stamps and they will tend to pick up the pigmentation of your ink pad, even after you clean them. Trust me when I tell you that this is a clean stamp. It just changed the color of the photopolymer. So don't worry about placing that in a different color ink pad. It won't pick up any of the previous tone as long as you've cleaned it. So light taps across here. What we're looking to do is to kind of just fill in the blanks. And I'm pressing here, solid pressure. I don't wanna to push too hard because I don't want to fill the window. So I'm cleaning that off camera. And then I'm gonna come in now with my grading, going back to the Memento Black ink pad. And from that same stamp set, there's these adorable words that say, wishing you a festive Christmas. And I'm gonna place these here near the bottom. There we go. And then I decided we need something in the pickup truck bed, right? So that's the great thing about the stamp set is there are multiple different images that can fill the bed if you desire. In addition to that, there are images here that you can actually create a scene. So let's go ahead and let's take the outline of the Christmas tree. We're gonna go ahead and ink that up in the black. Now, when you first get this, you're gonna be going, which way does it go? So that straight long edge is gonna fit here on the bed of the truck. So again, I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera view. Let's see, and we're gonna stamp. Now, it doesn't look like much just yet because we have to fill it in with some green. So I'm gonna switch over now to the Mossy Meadow and that coordinates with my designer series paper. And that's the great thing about Stampin' Up! products is all the color coordination. So again, this is going to be the bottom of the bed. I'm gonna ink that up and then I'm looking to align the top tip of the tree. That's kind of my best tip for you so that it lines up. Now those little white areas are there on purpose. Stampin' Up! designed it that way so the tree would look like it had snow between the branches. Really cute, isn't it? And just to kind of play up the layers, I decided to bring in a piece of wild wheat. Now I can tell you right now, I didn't push very well and I didn't want to get my head in your camera view. So I made one ahead of time where I could get really, really close. Anybody else my age who understands that? Let's use that prettier one for you here. We're going to add some adhesive to the back side, one here, and then we are going to center this, leaving that margin again all the way around. Now we're ready to put this on the front of the card, but a very important step is you're gonna to need to add some ribbon. Now I've cut two pieces here ahead of time. One is seven inch, one is 11 inch. You're gonna use the seven inch piece and you're gonna to wanna to attach that here to the center of the front of the card so that we can have an area to close this. So I'm gonna flip this upside down and we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive here on this side. And I'm looking visually for the center. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna tack that down. Don't worry if it frays, it's all gonna be covered. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna add adhesive to the back side. Now look, and full disclosure, I'm gonna tell you that I started to stick it down and then remembered, oh my gosh, Lisa, you gotta do the ribbon first. Yeah, I make a lot of mistakes here too. 
And then we're going to center this here as well, looking for that nice margin all the way around. By tucking it between here, two things happen. It's gonna look a lot prettier, but it's gonna create a real secret closure for how these two pieces come together. Now there's gonna be a piece that goes here on the inside. Let me talk you through this. I did do it ahead of time. I used that same grounding image that I used here. All I did was I flipped it upside down and I made it level. And then I used the gift boxes from this stamp set that are here, really cute. Now there's a stamp to fill it if you want one color, but I wanted multiple colors. So I went ahead and I used my Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers on this one, just to color it in, make it really simple. The greeting is from there as well. I already started my adhesive on this one because remember I told you in full confession, I started to adhere it wrong and I had to fix it. So there we go. This is gonna go here to the inside of the card. Now, if you're wondering how I got those off without ripping off the paper, I'm gonna share that tip with you because we all make mistakes. I used my heat tool. Now I'm going to give you a very big word of caution. When you turn this on, it gets extremely hot. Never put your fingers inside of there. Stampin' up heat tools in case to retain the heat. I turn it on and I work far enough away, but I lift the layers and the heat and it actually will release the adhesive. And you have to be patient, work a little bit at a time. Watch your fingers. That's my disclaimer. But that is a game changer if you make mistakes, because I do. Because who wants to go and redo all that again, right? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that other piece, which is here, and we're gonna attach it to the back side of this one. So you're looking visually to go all the way across, and then we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive on this end as well. And again, doesn't matter if it's frayed, it's gonna look fine because it's gonna all be hidden. And again, I'm looking just visually, and I'm saying I'm using about an inch that I'm tacking behind here. Let's talk about putting this part together. Here's the card base. It's gonna go right here on the flap, so you do not want to put adhesive all along the whole card, otherwise it's gonna seal it shut. You have several options. You can come all the way to the crease here, or you can back it up to your layers, depending on how you want it. In my case, I really like the way it looks, leaving that little bit of vanilla here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this upside down now and we're gonna do two rows of adhesive on this side. Remember I told you the Stampin' Seal Plus is extremely strong. See, you don't wanna to push too hard. It'll rip your paper. And now I am assured that when I put this down, it's going to stick. If you're having a hard time keeping everything in place, use your stamp to help you. Now I am looking to center this. So I'm looking for even space here and here, just visually and I'm coming right up to that layer of the vanilla cardstock. And when it looks pretty good, we are going to tack that in place. Now, obviously we've got our double flap here and here, but when you open up the card, it's kind of, kind of empty, isn't it? All right, well, let me show you how that punch works. Now, since you've already seen me stamp the truck, I've gone ahead and done that ahead of time, but let's talk about this builder punch. I love that there's four punches in one, which we've already talked about. So you're gonna to wanna to use strips to maximize this and not have a whole lot of waste. This is about one and a half inches and obviously you'll need narrower pieces for the others. You're gonna slide this in through the top and I'm looking to create that border that the punch will make all the way around. So I'm just kind of shimming this a little bit left and right to make it even. Once I'm happy with it, I am literally lightly squeezing the punch, not to punch it out, but so that the cardstock locks in place. That's gonna ensure your placement and then give it a good squeeze and then you can punch out your image. But let me show you now what I did here. I wanted to add this to the inside of the card and I did create this portion ahead of time to save a little bit of time. I did that same ground here and I've got the presents and you're thinking, well, how did you know where to put those? All I did is after I punched it out, I put my truck where I wanted it and I took a pencil and I drew a line. Super easy, but I made sure that I extended my coloring just a little bit lower because I am going to elevate this with my dimensionals. So let's go ahead and put one on each of those tires to balance the image and then another here at the top. I'm gonna to use my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment to help me remove those dimensionals. It helps these old arthritic hands. And now what I'm looking to do is look to make sure that the presents are going to align inside the bed of the truck and I'm covering up my pencil mark. Now, obviously, if you're afraid yours is gonna show, you can go ahead and erase it. 
But look at that, isn't that adorable? All right, so let's add our adhesive and we're gonna add this to the inside of the card, but I cannot wait to share with you the other cards that I created that are not Christmas themed to show you the versatility of this fun fold that you can use all year round. So once again, we've got our borders and then we'll tack that in place. So this is gonna fold, this is gonna come over. Here is your double flap fun fold. Your ribbon's gonna to come to the back side and then you're going to tie this. Now this has a little bit of a masculine woodsy feel, doesn't it? So I felt that maybe a bow wasn't appropriate. So let me teach you how to make a single loop bow. So we've tied it like we normally would and you're gonna start just like you're going to make a bow. We're gonna pull the other piece through instead of stopping here and making the bow, you're gonna pull that bottom one all the way through and then you're gonna pull tightly. When you pull in the direction you want it to lay, you're gonna get that really attractive single loop bow. Now I'm grabbing my scissors because I wanna trim this up a little bit. Now, of course, you can always add a gift card to this card. I wanted to make sure that I showed you that it will fit. So you can go ahead and add it with a glue dot to the inside of that double flap. Let me push that off to the side and let me share these other cards with you. This next card is gonna use a compilation of stamps, but it all centers around this, the apple harvest. Fall's coming, and you know, apples come in lots and lots of colors. I decided to do mine in a Granny Smith apple theme. I'm gonna be using some words from Wonderful Thoughts, and I added some additional greetings from Darling Details. So I just wanted to make sure you knew where those were coming from. And here is my card, isn't this sharp? Black with anything is just so striking. This is Lemon Lime Twist. This is that glorious gingham designer series paper. I used the Stampin' Blends markers to color it. Heat embossed my greeting and I cut that out. Let's go ahead and open up that gingham ribbon. And then you're gonna see here is my double flap front. And this is just the stamps from the stamp set. I absolutely love this because it gave you this texture piece, which is going to make great coordination for your gingham designer series paper. And then here is the inside of the card. Save those scraps, they go perfect inside your card. So here's card number two. And then this last one is quite different, but it's centered around this one, just my type. And I did mine in a rainbow thing. Now, while there's a greeting in here to use, I really fell in love with this one from Kindest Expressions, sending sunshine and rainbows. But I had to play up a little bit of that with the rays of light background stamp. So let me show you how this one came out. Again, I used a black base to play up those black solid words. I stamped the rainbows intermittently here on that flap. You're gonna see that I did a little bit of blending. There's those big greetings. Here's my glittered ribbon closure. Let's go ahead and open that up. And then you're gonna be able to see here on the inside how this flap also opens for the double card. So it says love you and miss you. And then there's that ray of light background stamp, really fun. And then I use this one, you're on my mind and in my heart and a small heart here. And again, I just grabbed different greetings and different images. That's where another heart came from, just to kind of complete my card. So mix and match with what you have. There's lots of areas to decorate this double flap fun fold card. Now, whether you're making it for Christmas or for another occasion, doesn't matter. I would love for you to pop down right now in the comments and let me know which one is your favorite. I love reading your feedback. Now I wanna make sure you know all about this. It's Party with the Stamp Studio. It is our annual in-person event. It's gonna be held on Saturday, September 23rd in the Tampa Bay area. We would love to meet you and we would love to have you meet one another. We have people coming from all over the US plan to spend a long weekend here in the Tampa Bay area and enjoy this event for the full day. We have stamping and demonstrations and there's gonna be lots and lots of fun. And did I mention Prize Patrol? We're giving away a lot of fun stuff. You're gonna be able to find all the information on my website. If you click there, it's gonna pop right up, Party with the Stamp Studio. It's under online events as well. We would love to meet you. Next, I wanna make sure you know all about Stamp Studio memberships. I create a new card project every single Monday that is sent to you via email. It's a project I don't share anywhere else and it doesn't matter what country you live in. Best of all, it is $5 for the entire month and you get fresh ideas. But if that's not enough, you're gonna to wanna to probably take advantage of level two. Level two is going to give you all of that plus a fun fold card tutorial once a month, 
a discount on my PDF tutorial library, and of course, we do product giveaways. Mark your calendar. I'll be back with you next Monday, which is August 21st. I would love to have you join me here at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. And thank you, Gina, for being here to help moderate with me. I look forward to seeing you all then. Have a great evening.